Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Jamie Walker McCall, the production designer for Schmigadoon. And season two of this series uh, takes a wildly different tone when you compare it to the, the kind of candy colored season one. Did you have to go back to any point of season one as a, a reference point to say I'm going to do the opposite of this as we go into this new era? Well, I, you know, I watched season one and it was so fun and colorful and I knew um, they, that we were going in a darker turn this year, but we still, it was important to still have the fun liveliness of the season one. So that was, you know, the challenge that I had. So I did go back and look at it. And, um, I mean, it was, it was fairly candy coated and beautiful. So it wasn't that hard to kind of just make it a little bit darker. Yes. Yes. It's definitely darker as we go to, you know, the musicals of the 1960s and seventies take a different turn. And I feel like it's kind of best exemplified when, you know, our two main characters walk across that bridge and we see Chicago for the first time. And it's kind of this very iconic city street with the signage. What was your inspiration in creating that look? Um, I knew as soon as I read what Cinco had wrote, I knew in my mind where I wanted this to be, you know, the the fog clears and it's immediately um, leafless trees, dark. I had all the trees painted black. I just wanted it to really read, read quickly that it was going to be not the same schmigadoon we knew from season one. Yeah. Is there kind of a big, you know, gap between making something period, uh, the aesthetic period specific versus, you know, accurate to musical theater? Um, because their musical theater is always this like heightened world. Do, do they feel like different jobs? What was really fun about it is that I'm used to doing such um, period accurate, correct pieces that this time I tried to keep fairly accurate, but then I had the um, creative license to be a little bit more theatrical. And that was really fun because I'm not used to doing theatrical theater elements. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was fun to add a little bit of embellishments here and there, like darkening up the brick and, and sh creating um, shadows and highlights using paint techniques rather than realistic use of lighting formats. And one of the, I would say, most important set pieces and locations in this season is the, the Crack Club, the cabaret space. Um, what is the challenge? How do you make a space that has to feel so kind of intimate and almost claustrophobic and yet there have to be these huge production numbers in it that was the first thing that I designed actually and mm -hmm. it was important I knew because there was going to be I didn't know all the choreography at the time but I knew there was going to be a lot um, happening in the crack club and the only thing I could do from my point of view was make things mobile um, you know walls wild and fly out as much like all um Pretty much every single wall in there was able to to wild and fly out. All the booths in there also were on uh, casters, and those could move out fairly easily. Um, all the booths on the side walls wagoned out, you know. So it gave, while creating a, a small intimate space, you also have to think about the shooting crew and and those elements and how the camera is going to work. So there's a lot of um, we even have a, a big wall on the back of the stage that could wild if they wanted to get a big crane in there. Like, so I tried to plan ahead for thinking about all the possibilities that um, John and Cinco and Alice and were wanted to do. And you mentioned the, you know, not knowing the music. Do you know any of the numbers going in? Do you have any like requirements of like, this space needs to fit this many dancers or, and mm -hmm. design with that in mind? No. Not, not initially, not off the bat until Chris was on and I started to get filtered the dance routines. Um, so I think it, it's a lot of your imagination of what it could be or um, you design for things and then tell them what you have. And they're so creative that they just are like, oh, that's great. And we'll incorporate that into the space or, you know, and then when I finally saw some of the dance numbers, like the chair routine, um, you know, and then knew we were, the art department was going to have to be responsible for the pile of chairs all constructed at the end. Uh, you know, so there were fun moments like that where you're like, oh, that's fun. Let's, let's like dive into that. 
Um, yeah. so it's really a combined effort of he's, Chris is being creative on his end. I'm being creative on my end. And then when we came together, it just is what you see on TV. And, uh, I think it worked. Yeah. Uh, where do you go for like textiles and the, cause it has such a kind of great CD texture to the whole space. Oh, wow. Um, well, a lot of like the, one of my favorite things in the crack club is, um, a custom designed wallpaper that we did. Um, that we printed at Aztec in Los Angeles. And then all the, Carol Lavalle, the set decorator would bring me, um, you know, like all the fabric for the the um, the booths and just the uh, metal pieces. Like she brought all that to me and we just, her and I chose each piece that you see on the set, the carpet and everything. Um, then I had a great scenic team who developed all the great scenery that you see, all the textures and stuff um, in Jenny's apartment. And so, yeah, it's just a collaborative effort of everyone, you know, throwing in the textiles in and around once the concept is out there. Yeah, and I know you don't have many, uh, I, I don't think many projects like Schmigadoon uh, in your history, but you were working on the prom. Did you feel like that helped you prepare for this type of, musical in any way? Oh, it did. Um, even working on Pose helped oh, yeah. me prepare for the prom. And then the prom helped me prepare for Schmigadoon. And that was a, a huge, you know, working with choreography from Pose and on um, has been a huge learning moment for me in my career. And it helped me all along the way. Yeah, I think the prom is obviously a much, uh, probably a lighter musical than this, but we do get to go to a lighter space in in Schmigadoon when you go to the the hippie tribe, mm -hmm. um, their their hangout. What it's such a fun space and much more like a welcome burst of color. What was the concept in that area? It's that was one of the last things I designed, and I think I put that out of my mind because Schmigadoon and everything else, um, Schmicago was so dark. So, so I didn't want to take my mind out of that dark space until I absolutely had to. And Senko kept asking, like, what are we doing for the, what are we doing? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Um, and then it was really fun. Once I, once I kind of purged all my darkness, I, you know, really dived into that moment. And again, Carol and her team really killed it with all the dressing and the dressing pieces and, it was just a fun like mood board to put together and then concept art, uh, bringing it all the whole space together and thinking about the dance routines. And then when they came to us and saying, we're going to put some of this on the bus and um, just the funny elements that are in there. It was so fun to add like, well, what is what is the refrigerator going to look like that's moving around, you know, all those little bits. And then the concept for um, the amphitheater for all of that was just something that we came up with. And it was a fun little added element that I was really excited that they used because sometimes you design these things and they never use them once you get on set but they did and it uh became a feature part so that was fun it was all fun and colorful yeah that space as well as the crack club kind of make me think a, a lot of the spaces in this season kind of belong to a group of people rather than being someone's home or being a home base so how do you uh, input like character into a space when it doesn't belong to a single person or to a couple? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, you have to put yourself in all the characters that you know are going to be in that set. And it, you design for a little bit of element for each person, you know, um, Madame Frau was like her bar was her area kind of thing. And um, so you just, you kind of put yourself in the characters and where they're going to be on the sets and you design for it. One of the biggest things was out back in the dressing rooms that was so specifically designed for each character. And I have to, again, give it to Carol on that one because she came up with a, a backstory for each individual's like dressing part. And it, like, I love listening to her and they're not main characters. They're just the people in the background, but it was, it was great. It, and that's what you do. You just take the space and you think about who's in it and who's, you know, in Elsie's dressing room, like who is Elsie? So, you know, you create a little backstory for each character and then it helps you design the set. And in the script, there's tons of references, obviously, uh, and songs to, you know, musicals of this era. There's little Easter eggs. 
did you go through your design process and figure out places where you could put Easter eggs in? It's interesting. It um, I designed a lot of it and then Cinco and I would, would sit down and he would help me put in the Easter eggs that he wanted. So really all the Easter eggs you see was a collaboration of me designing the sets and then, you know, say, and he letting me, giving me the Easter eggs and, and letting me put them certain places, but then he oversaw like exactly what they were or he'd add to a little bit more of the uh, kitschy element to to make it funny and um, so that was a nice collaboration between the two of us. I think in that sense, the show kind of walks the, this, there's a fine line between doing a loving homage to something and then going the other direction, it turns into kind of parody. So what is the tr what was the trick for you in terms of walking that line and, and paying homage to them? Well, I, you know, I did a lot of research and, and Cinco and I had a lot of um, conversations about that. And I think possibly because I, I don't have a huge um, theater background. I kind of knew enough about each thing, but not a whole lot. So I got to branch out and, and kind of just take my creative license and, and, and make it what I thought it should be rather than like trying to be beholden to what it was and, yeah. and copy that. Cause that was never the intention. It was always to, and again, I think maybe that's why I was hired because I don't have a huge theatrical background. Um, so to take something and actually make it whatever your mind can come up with while still having like at least a baseline for, for the original. Did you become a musical theater fan over the course I of did, it? I did, I have. have I mean, even, yes. Oh, and like, and just Cinco's knowledge is just fascinating and things that he loves that, every, you know, everybody else is kind of like, oh, I don't know about that one, but, um, you know it's just fascinating to listen to him and he's so enthusiastic and it makes you enthusiastic about it. And it did, it made me, it, you know, I did so much research and um, I love being a part of it. It's really fun. Yeah. And in thinking about that, and especially because you said you didn't necessarily know all the songs coming in um, and what would be needed in the space, it must be such a surprise, like a, you know, there has to be even a reveal for you when, as the designer, when it's finally full of musical numbers and uh, all this song and dance, what does that feel like for you when you get to witness it come to life oh, like that? It's amazing. Once all the actors and the characters come to set and you see them perform and you see little snippets, it's just, it, it brings, you know, I can only, I'm all, my stuff is only the backdrop. So then once Angus's costumes come into play and props come into play and and the choreography and the writing in Cinco's amazing songs. I even was fortunate enough to get some rough cuts from Cinco playing on the piano of the songs, which was great. But then once you actually hear them on set playing as they're doing the whole routine, you're just, it's, it's amazing. It's something that I, you know, there's gotta be some behind the scenes stuff. It, it's really, it gives you chills once you hear it all. Yeah. Was there a certain number that was your favorite that was kind of the biggest you know, surprise from what you expected? Oh, what's, um, they all get stuck in your head. <laughs> 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 They're, um, God, what's the one that, there's one that every time I watch, watch the season, it gets, it's stuck in my head for days. And now of course, because I'm on the spot, I can't think of it, but um, they're all fun. And, and everyone was singing all of, like all the crew, was constantly singing the songs because they're just so catchy and so fun that um, they just get stuck in your head for days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a great soundtrack and brought to life on a really great uh, set from, from you. So thank you, Jamie, so much for sitting down to discuss it with me. And for everyone who's watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Stick with us this season. Jamie, it was a pleasure. So nice meeting you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.